Paul, over to you. I'm not going to introduce because everyone knows who you are, definitely. Sure. Good morning still, eh? Uh, before I uh, start the session today, uh, do you want to ask any questions about what we discussed yesterday? If you remember. Uh, don't ask me questions from the IT presentation you had last evening. Uh, I didn't talk about it, but anything you feel like asking. Because I want to finish at 12.30 uh, and rush off, I have another commitment. Um, any questions you want to ask? I mean, you know, uh, anything uh, that I might be able to answer. I mean, you know, if I don't know, I will say I don't know. A few minutes, yeah? Yes. Okay, I will focus today more on that. Yes, that's a very important thing. And especially, uh, we live in an era where we are constantly being stimulated, right? especially visually, and uh, our attention spans have been coming down. Uh, it won uh, uh, award, uh, Nobel Prize winning uh, uh, economist once said, uh, when there is uh, when there is so much of information, there is scarcity of attention. Right? Actually, what happens is not that you don't lose attention; you pick up something else, so your attention goes to another one. Right? Not that you have lost the ability to pay attention. And when you say observation, also observation has number of levels. Now, I think you will be uh, learning about uh, uh, fourth industrial revolution and uh, internet of things and things like that. And actually, at the digital level, the observations are happening at a much better level than at a human level. Uh, that's why artificial intelligence plays on, you know, we leave footprints all over the world without your knowledge, right? Uh, you know, every year Google sends you a message saying, this is where you have been to. Huh? It means they have been tracking all our movements and uh, uh, they know your behavior. That's why the moment you go and search one thing, then next time all the ads related to that comes. That's at machine learning level. Then what about you, right? You are a supercomputer but we are losing some of our programming capabilities. So that we will discuss now. Anything else? Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> Okay, you made my day. Okay, right. Yeah, that's the kind of thing that gives me satisfaction. And I've been helping a lot of uh, uh, people, executives, you know, business people to go up level. Because different people, right, have different uh, ways of looking at things. And uh, always it helps to get somebody else's perspective. Right? And, you know, that's why yesterday I said, no, so I cannot give solution. Solution is yours. But 
somebody might trigger something okay so I will not be able to cover this full topic but I just want to give a glimpse of it uh, and I would like to get feedback from you because um, I see there is a lot of need for people to now develop and everybody talks about how to develop the business what about you is it you are also important so this is about you right this is about Uh, this is like a two-day program, but I will give you a few pointers which I want to. So I'll try to uh, kind of go fast, uh, but to give you a flavor. But I want to come and do something more about the mind because mind matters most. So shiksha means uh, disciplines, right? Uh, so I'll tell you how I started this process. after many years i met a friend of mine a schoolmate he had migrated to uh, usa and he was supposed to be doing very well in fact he was doing very well he had managed to get some agencies and he had the exclusive rights for number of states in usa they were supplying things for big buildings uh, you know quite technical stuff and for sri lanka and some of this part of the world as well so he was doing very well and he was living uh, his house was in uh, beverly hills you know one of the most expensive uh, places to live so you can imagine right so it means he has been successful right yeah and uh, <coughs> whenever he comes to colombo we, we meet him and i have been discussing you know how ha how can he uh, take his business to the next generation and things like that he his only son was studying uh, in a in stanford and he had bought him a expensive car to go i i, I don't i i don't know much about cars for me it is an expensive car so you can give any name it doesn't matter one day he gets a call from his wife and says uh, you know puta has uh, stopped using that car he has gotten on to my uh, small car right uh, the wife's car and he is now living off the car so he called the son and asked puta what's happening he said tata you have given me everything but i realize you haven't taught me what it means to be poor so i want to experience what poverty is and uh, this is my experiment so he is, has been living he didn't like this story but he went little early and then he realized his son is kind of getting into some uh, psychological problems so he brought him here and uh, had a chat with me i helped him to uh, be seen by one of the best psychiatrists and his son was into a very high level of depression and he was suicidal so this was too much for him and uh, he also needed counseling and in fact i put him on to an again a friend and I, i mean it's too much for me to handle i am not a trained counselor so now father is getting different treatment son is getting different treatment and couple of weeks later the doctor called me and said deepal your friend has just died last night did you get the news i said no so he just died this gave me a big question to ask answer he he was supposed to be very successful then what happened to him so that happened this incident happened just before covid and that gave me a lot of free time to do some research and ask what is the success we are going behind you know so so i evolved this concept using mostly the wisdom that we have here right so what i will ask you to do with this program is define what success really means to you don't leave somebody else's dream 
it got to be your dream okay begin a deeper dialogue with you learn a few life principles and i'll guarantee you whatever that i will share if you pick one and apply you will get benefits 100% sure guaranteed right ye ravi ki bhi adutu ai pratyaksha right because i have built in about 40 years of my life experience also this i am not an entrepreneur of that of your kind but probably in my entire life i have been an entrepreneur because uh, i started uh, writing bills in a shop for 365 rupees ever since i have been taking risks right and uh, and uh, when i look back yeah i have done lot of things uh, right uh, so i have taken risks right at the risk of losing your job you have taken risks so same thing right what i thought about it the worst that can happen you lose a job so what you find a job no right i have been a van sales rep i was the first van sales rep to uh, sell polythene and uh, i still can do that so i at least i know right uh, still there will be shops and i will be selling and i am the one who invented uh, who introduced uh, lunch sheets i mean when i say this young people look at me yes if i have introduced uh, drugs to the country right uh, but that's how you look at market opportunities when i was at musajis uh, those days when people buy uh, when people bring lunch uh, they br- they buy thick polythene sheets polyethylene sheets and then uh, you wrap your lunch bring it to office eat it wash it take it back and next day also you bring another thing you don't throw away so <clears throat> there was a melee restaurant called rasa sayam uh, next to majestic city at that time and the owner would come and say deepal can we get some thin polythene so he always asked for the you know thin polythene that means off uh, grades so at that time the company had been introducing this uh, high density polythene siri siri bags and there was a lot of waste so i thought why don't we try that right i gave him a few samples and say mr mutalib why don't you try this he said deepal this is fantastic don't give this to anybody give me but we have enough waste then i went to my boss and said sir this is a fantastic opportunity why don't we promote this as lunch sheets so at that time i thought uh, polythene is uh, is the savior of the planet right and uh, so we put a small ad in the newspaper saying you know if you want to get a sample of a new lunch sheets send a self uh, addressed stamped envelope and we get like you know four a bag size uh, applications every day so that's how we introduced uh, uh, lunch sheets in 1980 right so rest is history right don't blame me and but in in selling that i discovered lot of things so then i t- i told the bosses you know look here there's a fantastic opportunity for us to make grocery bags because brown paper bags and you know those things are messy and the kadadahi bag is you know not very clean and all that so we ma- ma- made these grocery bags i go from shop to shop to sell mudalali is not very interested in uh, buying that i said mudalali this is very good this is uh, you know uh, untouched by human hand and uh, you can put your biscuits into it and you know it will not uh, there, there won't be any moisture and all that is fine ya ya mahatya okkoma hondai he bhai then me bag the you know kadadahi bag and me kadadai bag he took a pack of kadadai bag and put it onto the uh, weighing scale you know electronic weighing scale it was about 50 grams now so there are about uh, let's say uh, 50 bags so when i sell 50 times i get 50 grams of biscuit saved that's his profit so you see this very important to understand where what is the business model right simple things that was the insight right and you still don't learn learn right so uh, 20 years later in eagle insurance we created a product for uh uh business people whose incomes are fluctuating so a policy that doesn't get lapsed you know 
even if you don't pay. Fantastic value proposition. But agents didn't sell. After a massive advertising campaign, I sold only four policies. Because I forgot who is the important partner in this game. The distributor, the agent. He will not sell it for 4%. Right? So it's very important. So it's, these are my mistakes, which I have learned. I could have learned that lesson when that uh, polythene was not accepted by the Mudalali, but I had forgotten, you know, that's what happens, right? So, <coughs> our definition of success is influenced by so many factors, right? Now, when you go to schools, young people, they all want to be Mark Zuckerberg and, uh, you know, when they say they want to uh, uh, drop out from the university because all dropouts are the millionaires, right? So they think, uh, uh, okay, if uh, you want to be a millionaire, first thing you have to do is drop out, huh? right? It doesn't matter, right? So you and your life stage also changes, uh, you know, what you consider is success, right? And uh, your beliefs and values also can influence what you mean by success. And sometimes you might have a childhood dream. Not everybody had childhood dreams. Some people from the childhood, they knew exactly what they want to do. Very rare. Hmm? And exposure and education, that's a completely a different uh, thing. So this, uh, our generations and the generation above us, they cannot even relate to the young people today. Because, uh, you know, we, what do we know of the world of today, right? These people in their 70s are trying to decide uh, what the young people on this country should be living. <laughs> they, have, they don't have the slightest clue, isn't it? Right? How they think, isn't it? Right? So, it's very important to consider all these things influences your success definition. Right? So, when you do that, now you ask, okay, what do I consider my success? So what I suggest to you is take a piece of, I mean, this is like a half a day session, right? So this one is how to write your success definition, okay? So what do you really mean by success? You should be able to write. Because otherwise it's a hazy dream, right? Very important, right? You write. And why do you want to achieve that? It's very important, right? If you think you want to be rich, ask, why do you want to be rich? You know, because that is the wrong end of the stick, right? And what are you willing to sacrifice? That is the most important thing. A lot of people have dreams, but they don't want to get up from the dream to realize their dream. So after this, after experiencing my friends, this sudden death, I realized if you are successful, you have to be successful in your purse and in your heart, both places, right? So it should be economic and emotional. So then I invite you to look at this frame, this model, and this is only one example, right? You, have, you can figure out your one, right? This is what I have been using. First, you should be able to say, if you are successful, you should be able to say, I have. You should be able to say one day, do you want anything? No, I don't want anything. Right? That's the state you want to be economically. Second, you should be able to use what you have. There are a lot of people, they have, but they can't use them. A eh? lot of people. They spend a lot of money and, uh, you know, and they acquire things, but they don't uh, use them. What's the big idea? Now, the younger generations in the world, they don't believe in owning. They believe in using, isn't it? Right? It's a different market, isn't it? Different mindset. Why do you have to own? Right? Now, originally, the concept of leasing was developed in Japan. A factory wants a machine. They don't have to own it. They want to use it. Now, because of the legal system in Sri Lanka, leasing is used only for vehicles, 
But ideally, leasing should be for machines. I mean, like a big million dollar machine, why should you own it? Right? You should be able to use it. Right? Then the second one is free from debt. I am not talking about strategic leveraging to take de debts. Right now, in a highly high inflation, I am freezing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can't speak. <laughs> Tilan, can you tell them? Huh? Otherwise, you might have another death here. <laughs> right. So, in a high inflation environment, it is strategic to leverage because the value of currency is going down. But I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about being in debt, like in Sri Lanka, having spent for things that you don't need you are in debt. And the more importantly, the inner feeling that I have done right things. You know? So if you have these four, then I think you are successful. So this is one kind of a model, right? So just to illustrate, so just to illustrate what it means by this uh, I have. Have you seen people selling sweep tickets? Do you think they believe in sweep tickets? Yes. Huh? You mean the seller? Seller? Do they really believe? The believe? They don't believe. If they believe, what should they do? Take it home and you know. They'll use it. <laughs> they will use it, right? So that is a mind of the opposite, right? You see? So they, they are always poor. Now, on the other hand, a prisoner, right? This is a beautiful story. The uh, Shawshank Redemption, right? It's one of the best movies in the world. Uh, and uh, I think you can watch the full movie on YouTube. Uh, uh, in Netflix, it must be. Yeah, it's like world's number one, right? I watched it on, on a plane. <laughs> I have watched most of my movies on planes. This fellow escapes from the, one of the most uh, you know, protected uh, prisons using that small um, sledgehammer which was uh, brought into the prison in a Bible. So you can imagine the size. Now he has in his mind, I can. You know, that's the sense of abundance. You remember this video that was going viral, no? this woman during Corona time? Now that is Rich, that is happiness, right? Same thing happened in India. This woman gave, you know, 90% of her pension for corona aid, right? Now, so if you can be like that, it means you have achieved economic success, right? What happened? Ideally, you should be able to say, no, I don't need anything. I have met some of the most um, richest people in this country, and uh, they say, I mean, like, I don't need anything. Then when we ask them, why are you doing all these things? It's for fun. Because once you reach that level, it's, it's fun, right? You, you buy a company which is not doing very well and uh, turn it around, you get some satisfaction, right? Or you find some young per person and invest in their business and see it grow. You know, it's fun, right? There are some, but there are some who are greedy and you can see they are not happy, right? There are some who are very happy, right? I don't need anything. I don't have to prove anything, right? And they might acquire some interest in some crazy thing to do, you know? It's okay, right? So that's the kind of thing. So don't judge your success by looking at somebody else's life. Because we don't see the full, full picture, right? You see swans uh, on water, you see them glide. But you don't see the hard work, right? So don't, you know, right? Get inspiration. But don't think I want to be like him. Right? Be you. If you want to be somebody like him, you should get into the movie industry. Because somebody plays you to be somebody, right? Yeah. Uh, right? 
enjoying what you have and you know is linked to what economic success is a lot of the time we don't know what we want so prioritizing is something very important right? so these are inner programming that you need to do to be a successful business person because being in a bank I, I was on the bank board for nine years we have seen how people borrow money from banks and do the wrong things and then start complaining that's because that inner engineering hasn't happened we saw yesterday expenses start from uh, your values and beliefs right so <clears throat> Start constantly looking at what you have, your financial assets, your physical assets, your intellectual assets, what you know, and your capability assets, and your social assets. Very important. Whom do you know? You know, that's very important. So constantly keep saying, I have some things. That will give you positive energy rather than saying, I don't have. And joy of being free from debt. I don't think being Sri Lankans, we don't have to talk any about it. We really know, right, uh, what's the wrong thing. Actually, this morning I was uh, uh, talking to central bank uh, people and I said, you know, the need to do a national level financial literacy education because uh, people who make decisions have no financial literacy, right? These 225 people, I think there must be about 10. Who knows the financial implications of what they're doing? So they make decisions, right? So serious situation, right? So, right, that we discussed yesterday. That we discussed yesterday. I will skip that. The difference between the price and value. Now these are concepts that have been driven to us, but we have forgotten. Now all of you remember the story, Jataka story of this Serivani uh, Jataka, right? Where a little child is there, there's an old Amma, huh? and then comes the, um, this Manadame, Manabadu Devarakan, Parnakota. Parnakot man comes and says, you know, he's selling these uh, bangles, eh? right? So just imagine the structure of this story. These are, these are well thought out stories, right? There's an old Archie and a granddaughter. So there's no man in this house. So it means Archie is vulnerable. Can you see the psychology of this whole story? And now the first trader comes. He says, oh, this is not valuable, you know. He goes away and the girl continues to cry. And there comes the second uh, trader. He says, my God, you know, I have to give you so much with this, you know, but uh, if you are insisting, I'll take it, but, you know, this is so valuable. Now, what is more valuable? The Walalu or the Rantalia? Hmm? It depends, no? It depends, right? In pure economic terms, you will say Rantalia is more important than the uh, right? But for Archie, what was more valuable? The daughter's, you know, granddaughter's happiness. For the granddaughter, most valuable thing are the bangles. You see, when you mix, right, the difference between price and value, we make a lot of decisions which are not right in life. Right? So, how you bring it into business is very simple, isn't it? So it's very important to understand, right? What has happened to us is, now we are going to give up a lot of things that are of value because we have, we have been thinking there's a price to those, right? And the most important thing, you were yesterday listening to Ravi and he was telling, you know, cash flow, cash flow, cash flow, right? Businesses die not because they don't have profit. All what you need is a good accountant. Uh, he will show you how to make the accounts look profitable. That's, it. That's possible, right? You change a few assumptions and you know, do here and there and then you make profits, right? 
Now, there are finance people, you know, they will tell you how to make profits. But businesses die when there is no cash flow. Right? Isn't it? Right? I learned it when I was the president of the Sri Lanka Institute of Marketing. There were months that we couldn't pay salaries. Then only I realized what is cash flow because working in an insurance company, you never learn uh, the problem of cash flows because we only have cash, <laughs> right? So net cash flow, whether it is in your personal life, in your business life, you know, right? So very simple, right? So don't take your eye away from the cash flow. This we discussed yesterday, right? And retirement. So even if you're an entrepreneur, you must have an exit plan. You know, in Sri Lanka, now only people are thinking of exiting from businesses. In Europe, it's an idea, isn't it? Right. Uh, but our people, uh, in one program I asked about retirement plans, somebody said, uh, oh, well, my plan is to uh, buy a plot of land in Abilipiti and grow fruits on my retirement. Oh, I see. When are you going to retire? 60. So 60, you want to go to ability and grow fruits, huh? <laughs> now, how many hours do you stay in sun? He said, no, I am working in office, okay. In, at 60, you want to be in sun and grow fruits. I said, you know, be real. <laughs> so sometimes we don't know, right, what we want, right? Uh, so this is a separate topic, but have some idea, right, what you really want to do. It will change, right, because sometimes you might not live that long if you are lucky. Right? And what is going to happen to most of us is uh, doctors will not allow us to die. So that's the problem, isn't it? Living is very exp expensive in time to come, so you must have a long-term plan, right? But it's very interesting to think, you know, so that you have some idea, right? It doesn't mean that you have to think of retirement from the day you start, but it's better to think when you are young, what you want to do when you are old. Because when you are old, it's too late to think, right? I can tell you now I have lived uh, 62 years, right? So, guilt-free living, I just want to give you a few things from Asian, our, our value system, right? How many of you have watched the movie uh, Yashodara? Right? It's a beautiful movie, no? Just, uh, just take this concept and see how powerful our thoughts have been. You have heard the uh, Rama in a story, you know, Rama Sita story. When Sita was abducted, uh, when Sita wanted to prove that she has been continuously faithful to Rama, what did she do? She jumped into the fire. You know, these stories are telling some other things. So that is the power of truth. This entire crisis we are going through in Sri Lanka is because we have not been truthful. Now, according to Buddhists, the highest level of development a man can become is becoming a Buddha. Now, he became Buddha. After almost a year, you know, he came back to his uh, palace. And his father went upstairs and told Yasodhara, look here, your husband, now he's supposed to be Buddha, he has come downstairs, please come and see him. Yeah, he may be Buddha. But if it is true that I have been a very good wife, right, I have lived a noble life, he should come to my room. I mean, like, you know, what women's day concepts we have. <laughs> right? So Budunamadru went all the way, climbed upstairs. That's the power. You know, the, we, we miss these lessons, right? That's the power of truth, right? I remember, you know, when you are growing up in your career, I remember once somebody had given a complete wrong message about me to my boss, and he was a bit upset, and he said, Deepal, I want to have a chat with you, and he said, you know, something, that you are supposed to have done something wrong. It was an absolute lie. I told him, for me, if I have to choose between my job and my principles, I know what to choose. I have no explanations for this. That's it. 
then you have enormous strength in you. So whether in business or anything, never underestimate the power that you get when you have that. You know, don't worry. That strength you must have. So the Eastern value system had this. The West says happiness is something that you go in search of. So much so in the American Constitution it says every American citizen has the right to pursue happiness. It means happiness is not here. Happiness is somewhere there. In the East we say you have to discover happiness now. So if you think I will be happy only when I make my first billion, you are on the wrong track. Right? Be happy on the journey. I will explain it to you in a while. Right? I uh, will skip this and uh, come to that. You know, this famous uh, cricket incident, it is about values. Right? So the entire business, why we cannot do business in this country? Because we are not, we cannot be trusted. And when you cannot trust, see the amount of systems you have to build in an organization to control checks and balances. Globally, there is an enormous cost associated with corruption. So there is lack of values, right? lack of integrity. If there is integrity, you can be predicted. Dambika's example, he said, this uh, solar panel guy had said, right? I went through your website and I got to know who you are and I can trust you. You know, these are, these are universal concepts, right? This cannot be altered. You alter, you, you take a shortcut, maybe 10 years. After that, right, you, you mark my word, all those people who have made money, right? Through all these, you know, dubious means, maximum it will last one generation. Even one generation it will not last. What is the big idea? Right? These people who have robbed so much, they are scared. You and I, we can go on the road. That's what it means. And, and you can decide how much you are going to trade. It's up to you, right? I want you to watch these two movies, right? One is called uh, The Walk, right? It's about a man who walked on a tightrope tied between the two towers of the World Trade Center which was destroyed, right? And uh, called Philip Petty. He was a, you know, this who walk on tightrope, right? And when he wanted to do this, he went to his mentor and said, I'm going to do this. He said, it is all right, but I want you to have a safety harness. This 1,400 meters uh, high, you know? And uh, he said, no, I don't want to use a safety harness. Why? No, because you have told me never to cheat the audience. He said, at that height, nobody will see whether you are wearing a safety harness or not. Then he asked the question, if you were to do this, will you use a safety harness? The mentor says, no, I will not use. Now, he takes a risk of his life. I mean, you know, falling from, just imagine, you know, Pitubambu, uh, you know, World Trade Center here, you know, no chance, right? So he took that risk. It's a true story, right? Because he wanted to be true to his principle. So you decide which level you want to go up to. That is up to you. I can't tell you, right? This one, Haxo Ridge, right? This is another fascinating movie, right? All these things I watched on <laughs> planes, right? The, um, this guy, Desmond Thomas, he was um, a good Christian, you know, must be from one of these uh, uh, the, uh, evangelical churches. He believes it's bad to kill, but yet he wanted to join the army because that was 
what is called from by the young people. And he went on to this uh, Hexo Ridge battle. He single handedly saved 70 people, but he never touched a gun and he got into the war. He went as a medic uh, support person. So, I mean, you know, you, you risk your life for the principle you believe. So, you decide how much you want and your rewards will depend on the risk you take, right? So, simple things, right? Customer care, customer authenticity, all these things boil down to that. I remember when I was in advertising, uh, we did an annual report for uh, a company called uh, uh, Mercantile uh, Leasing. Mercantile leasing, no. Li uh, Mercantile Lloyd's leasing, you know, uh, MLL, right? And uh, at that time, the laminations were just getting introduced to the local market. They laminated, and it was on the wrong grain, wrong side of the grain. And when the books were delivered, the covers were curling up. So I didn't know what to do. There was a gentleman called uh, Mr. I forget his name, a Tamil gentleman. Uh, he used to live down uh, Dharma Palamavata, somewhere close to the. Uh, no, no, that is the. No, he is. Uh, anyway, so he also had quoted for this business, and we had not given it to him. But I went to him and said, uh, I forget his name, I'm growing old, right? So I said, This is what has happened. Don't worry, Deepal. I have some uh, uh, lamination. I will get them to this printer and ask him to do the put the grain the other way. It will go right. Now, we didn't give him the order. It was given to a competitor. But he wanted to help me. Not because of anything. Because he knew I was in genuine difficulty. Right? And then when I became a, a, a marketing communications manager at Eagle, then I wanted to give him work. Deepal, you know me, no, I don't quote. If you can't, if you want to give me work, you give me, I'll do. I am not quoting. Right? So that's his business, right? His press was in uh, uh, Maradana next where the uh, uh, Ananda College is, you know? So that was his, him, right? I, I'm sorry, I cannot remember his name, you know? But that's what you mean, you know? So that's how you, you huh? no, no, Tamil gentleman, uh, Keithi? No, 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 right, uh, it'll come to my mind, very thorough, he, he, he's no more, right? It's like that. So you need to decide how, how do you play your values. No, I will not uh, show you these uh, clips because it will take time. And the other thing is, we are not kind to ourselves. That's another thing. You will excuse everybody else, but not you. You are so worried about your weaknesses. Give yourself at least 50% marks, you know. Somebody must give you marks. Your wife may not give you. It doesn't matter. But you have to give. Right? Because there is so much good. And even in other people, right, there's so much good. Start looking at, right? You know, even all these bad people, there's some good. Once uh, I went to, uh, I, was, uh, I was invited to speak at uh, Valikada prison, you know? That's a good place to go, right? Because all the important people are there. And after the lecture, one guy got up and went. I thought, what kind of discipline is here? Because prison, right? He came back. He came back and gave me a pen, which is almost like this shape, right? Have you, you know, this pen, imagine this is in black. If I kept it next to that, you wouldn't know whether it is a uh, cross or a other thing, made out of coconut shells. Then I asked who he was. He's there having killed four people. 
right? Lifetime sentence. So, whom did I meet? A serial killer or a beautiful craftsman? He is a killer only when he kills, not otherwise. When you drive, you are a driver. Right? So you are a driver. You, all these big things don't work. So when you go home, right, those who are married, uh, all these big things are set aside, you know. Isn't it? Right? You know, because your wives don't trust, you know. Right? What are the big responsibilities wives give husbands, you know? If you if if your wife gives you to lock your door, then I consider you are a very reliable husband. <laughs> right. So right. So don't consider yourself as a complete thing from a little thing. Even your wife, husband makes a mistake, only that is a mistake, not the whole thing. You know? I asked hospitals, Damaki, you must tell these things to hospitals when, they are, when you do training. How do they announce? Patients who have come to see Dr. So and so, please go to the room number five. You are not a patient, isn't it? Patient? No, I am Deepal. Right? Yeah, there is a problem with my uh, one part of my body, it doesn't matter, isn't it? You see, so don't, don't generalize. Right? So when you have a problem, right? When you when somebody else makes a mistake, acknowledge. When you made a mistake to somebody else, acknowledge. Forgive, forgive the person, right? Forgive yourself, right? Some mistakes, you decide I made a mistake. Don't go and tell. You know, sometimes if you tell, it might hurt the relationship. But you resolve not to do it again, and move forward. See again, our culture has very simple solutions for these things, no? right? You are angry with somebody, single out of the Resolve. No? You know, these are so valuable and I feel sorry that we are not learning from them. Right? You know, such a powerful technique, no? It under them Bulatata Dila Vandina Kota, right? What can you do? You can't kick him. You have to pardon. Finish. No? After that, you're normalized. We never consider somebody permanently bad. We never consider somebody permanently good. This moment, he's good. If somebody asks, what, what do you know about him? How is he? He said, up to yesterday, he was good. <laughs> right? So it's like that. Once you understand that, your life becomes a little simpler. Right? So, so there are a few things that you need to do. So what I tried to do was define success. Right? So define success, you need to ask, do I have what I want? Can I enjoy what I have? Am I living a life free of debt and am I guilt free? So if you have these four, then that's one way to consider success. But that's only a one model. So what I'm trying to say is you need to articulate for yourself what success really means to you, not to somebody else. Because you are living your dream, not my dream, right? So that's very important. And I'm sure as entrepreneurs, you have chosen now to live your dream. But it's very easy to forget the journey. Right? It's very easy to forget. And the other thing is clarify purpose, why we are doing it. So always have a higher purpose than profits. Eighteen hundreds, when Unilever was started, they wrote the purpose statement. We want people 
who use our products. You know, we want to make cleanliness commonplace. In that time in Europe, they were not washing, huh? unlike us. We are paranoid about washing. Right? They don't wash every day. Right? That's why they invented perfumes. We also have invented perfume, but they are they washing. So make washing commonplace. Reduce the workload of females. Right? And make products for those of our customers, when they use them, they look better or something like that. And continue to today, that is what Unilever does. You know, clarify the purpose. Mr. Bill Gates, Bill Gates said, I want to make a computer software, Microsoft. I want it to be on every desktop and I want a desktop on every table which is run on Microsoft. And Mr. Fowles, who is the uh, founder of uh, Rainco Umbrellas, he had said, if ever somebody opens an umbrella in this country, it must be one of ours. I see the same level of visionary thinking, Bill Gates and Mr. Faust. Right? So think of something big, right? based on your, not only what you are doing today. Right? That's the kind of thing I want to do. Right? Things will always come, but think of something big, something how, yesterday you discussed, right? what's the consumer problem I'm going to solve at a profit? That doesn't matter. But the idea is I want to change the world, you know, change the world. Right? That's the kind of mission that you want to go. And next one is beat success blockers. Unfortunately, I don't have time to uh, go through this. There are five things that uh, we have our inner barriers um, that uh, we consider, I figured out people break, people don't suc become successful. Those five are called rapid. R means restlessness and worry. You're worried about the past and you know, anxious about the future. And you're constantly in these two and you are never here. That makes you things. And uh, there's a question here which uh, I have uh, got them to photocopy. I'll give you it today, right? It has these definitions a little bit, right? Number two, aversion, dislike. The minimum level of aversion is uh, you change your posture since you sat because there was a little discomfort. It is the same thought if you continue to the other end that will kill a person. We say, no, right? on the road how many times you have killed people? Not literally, you know. Right. You feel like, eh? you feel like killing, right? So, same thought. What happens? You miss the point, right? You get angry, right? Then you get agitated. You lose focus. You waste so much of energy. Right? Anger is absolutely waste of uh, energy, right? Third one, procrastination. Procrastination means I can do it later. I can do it tomorrow, I can do it next Monday. You give, it's like you are being a slave. We are so rich with uh, things to use, right? Right? Procrastination that I can do later, right? Indulgence means sapasevim, right? Indulgence can be innocent like, you know, sleeping a little bit longer to getting into habits and into, uh, you know, uh, addictions of all the things, right? Just to remember what indulgence is not. Once a very famous, uh, beautiful model, you know, Model, fashion model was interviewed on a TV program. And you know these TV anchors, they ask very intelligent questions. No? They ask, 
what you, you know, she is very beautiful, and I asked her, what, what are your favorite food? She said, oh, I love ice cream. Ice cream and a thin, thin, slim body doesn't go together, right? Then he asked, how often you eat ice cream? She said, well, the last I had an ice cream was 16 years ago. Right. You love ice cream doesn't mean you need to eat it. So now you extend the same thought to other things also, right? <laughs> Isn't it, right? So, you know, so when you look at another, another beautiful woman and your wife looks at you, you say, yeah, yeah. It doesn't mean that I'm going to take her, but I just said, well, you know. <laughs> so indulgence is another thing which forgets. Other one is doubt. Every successful person had moments where somebody inside you say, can you do it? Can you do it? And if you listen, you're 100% correct. This Eric Weimer, which I showed you yesterday, you know, the blind person, he's, he heard somebody was telling outside the camp in the few days before, the, you know, the, on the final ascent, they, they acclimatize several times, you know, you, you don't go at once. You climb, come down, climb, come down, like that. Then only you go to the final. And he heard somebody saying, you know, I don't know what this blind man is going to do. He's putting himself in danger and others also in danger. He says, I lost confidence. Then I had to tell myself, no, no, I'm going to do it, right, doubt. So rapid, hmm? right? And uh, uh, I've written a book called uh, Inward Bound for Mindful Living and Singhaleng Tieno Ame Sihi and Sitima. I have written uh, comprehensively about this, right? And next one is how to sustain happiness. Because if you don't sustain happiness, right, it's a skill. Yesterday, uh, Ranil touched a little bit about, right, how to sustain happiness. Because all our unhappiness are, are things have happened in a way that I didn't want to happen or it didn't happen the way I want. So unhappiness comes when we think we have control over things. Right? When you know that you have no control over, you have no problem. When you think you are the, you have power over everything, you are not God, so don't worry, things will change. Oh, it has changed, what to do, right? It's a, it's a long part of this program, but uh, that's the basic, right? There's a very powerful story that changed my life. There was a man, he had two sons. For one son, he gave all his wealth. The other son, he gave his ring. So he thought, why did father give me only the ring, right? Then he looked at the ring and it has a wording which says, this shall change. This too shall change, right? So then he thought, kept on saying this all the time. Very happy, he says, this too shall change. Unhappy, this too shall change. You remember Ranil yesterday said, you know, a very important point, right? When he was, uh, he lost his job and when he lost his big contract, right? It's already broken. When you take that kind of attitude, you know, your life is very simple. When your life is simple, you can take risks. Then you can be successful. Then you preserve so much of energy Otherwise, there is wasted. It's not worth because you don't have a quota of 200 years to live, right? So don't waste your energy on things that you have no control over. You think you have, a lot of people think they have control over a lot of things. What control you have, right? I had a beautiful mustache, which is 18 years younger than my hair. But come 40s, this started getting white. Then I realized I have no control over that. 
what to do, I shaved, right? My um, hairdresser asked Deepal, what about you uh, dyeing your hair? I said, that's a very good idea, but when will I stop? See what has happened to Mr. Mahindra Rajapaksa. <laughs> Whole body is uh, old, but the hair is jet black. Huh? <laughs> so when you know these things, your life is very simple. When your life is very simple, you can look at problems, take decisions, and move on. No big deal. Uh, you are lost? Yeah, I lost it. I'll start again. You can say that, you know. But the worst that can happen, right? There was a time that people were targeting and recruiting people from our company. There was a rival company that was recruiting my people. Then I thought, if I were the army commander, what happens? They will kill my people. That's how army commander loses his team. My people haven't died, right? So always think of a person who has had a bigger problem. Then you think it's okay. In managing all these things, you need to be mindful, right? Mindful is what you asked me to explain. How to focus. Now focus is not something that you can do. Focus is something that happens when there's interest. Once a friend of mine said, Deepal, my daughter has a major problem, can you help her? I said, yes, of course. She came and said, uncle, uh, I can't concentrate. Oh, I said, yeah, it's a big problem. I said, when you watch a teledrama or a movie, is it, uh, you can, can you concentrate? Ah, yeah, then it's okay. Ah, I said, then don't worry. It means you can concentrate on a teledrama, but you can't concentrate on chemistry and physics, right? Because they are not interesting. So we'll find out how you can make your chemistry and physics interesting. That's it. So don't try to focus. Let focus happen because you are interested. And if you like, if you, if you, if you learn to look at what happens right now, that's the only real thing. Memory is incomplete. Right? However much you think I have a superb memory, you always remember little bits of it. Right? Those who are no computer technology, you know it's like a digital map. When you are sending signals digitally, it doesn't send the full picture. It takes the points and then aggregate again. So our memory does exactly that. Right? So you pick a few things and then you you extrapolate it and then say this is it, right? So then you remember that. And future is something that hasn't come, but you imagine. We are very good in movie direction, right? We are so good. Just imagine the number of, just count the number of movies that you direct in a single day. All what you need is a small message, right? Now there's corona threat again, no? Right? So when you go home tonight, uh, you feel a little itchy throat. Oh, I was the whole day at Kingsbury. I was without the mask. I was with these people and I heard her also <coughs> clearing her thought. Maybe I have got corona. Now I have got fever, right? And tomorrow, you know, you end up in IDH by the time 8 o'clock tonight. You know, that's what happens. So to do that, what you need to do is learn to come to this moment. Okay? I'll take the next two minutes and teach you one simple technique how to do that. Okay? Right. Sit comfortably with your back straight but relaxed. Okay? Don't lean on to the back but slightly move a little bit. Okay? Relax your body and keep your hands uh, either on the thighs or just bring it together. Right? Whatever. Whatever comfortable way. Right? If you want, you can gently close your eyes without tightly closing. And feel that you are sitting here. Can you feel how you sit on the chair? How your buttocks press upon the chair and the weight of your body
How do you feel your legs? Try to feel your whole self sitting on the chair as if you are looking in a mirror. Just allow the body to give you feedback. And if you feel any tension anywhere in your body, just notice that place and gently say, relax, relax, you know. Visualize this place and ask it place to relax. And see whether you can notice any thoughts that pop up in your mind. And if it is anything to do with the past or anything to do with the future, you say, not now. Wait for a thought to pop up. And if it pops up, you gently say, not now. You will notice there is a small amount of silence that is emerging. you might notice that you are breathing. If you notice that you are breathing, try to follow the breath. Otherwise, just stay watching to see whether there are any thoughts. See how the breath comes in and goes out. And if anything else pops up in your mind, just notice that and find where your breath is. Don't interfere, don't force just allow it to happen. Take a deep breath while exhaling, open your eyes. Okay, you fell asleep? Even if it is, that's very good. At least find three minutes every day to do this. Right? Three minutes is very good because to brush your teeth, you need three minutes. It is not something that was given by evolution. It is something that we acquired. This is something that we have all the time. Right? This is the place, composure. You remember yesterday? Right? Every time you are in a tense situation, Watch your breath. Breath is there, no? if you are alive. Right? And that will give you that space you need to come back to the moment. That is the only real thing. Right? Everything else, either in the past or in the future. Right? Don't worry about the future. It hasn't come. Right? Don't worry, bank coming and taking your stuff out. All that, don't worry. Right. If you start living that before it happens, you're already there. Right. So keep developing this skill. This, right. I, I mean, you know, we, I just want to give a taste of what this whole concept, success exercise, is about. And uh, I hope one day we'll be able to experience it 
in a full program. Right? Uh, you can always uh, check on me uh, on Facebook. I'm not very active, but you can inbox uh, if you want, uh, Deepal's URG. And if you drop me an email, deepalsmiles at gmail.com, I'll respond. Uh, deepalsmiles at gmail.com. OK, wish you all the very best. I need to uh, run. Uh, I have another commitment to go. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much, Mr. Deepal. You have always been an inspiration. A big round of applause to Mr. Deepal. Thank you so much once again. Uh, you have been, you know, right from the beginning, it's, it's really, really supportive. He's been extremely supportive uh, throughout the process. Uh, thank you so much. Take the decisions and move forward. Brilliant words. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot. And definitely we're going to take the decisions and move forward. And we're going to change the course of the history of Sri Lankans. Are we ready? Yes. Are we ready? Yes. yes. Definitely we are ready. We, we're going to. It. Yes, no, um, uh, we need to give you, yes. Sure, definitely, definitely. It, it, all the materials will be shared in terms of the, all the sessions that we have done so far. And also, Mr. Deepal, one more minute, and we have uh, the token of appreciation. And I'm going to invite um, Mr. Keithy and Mr. Ruan De Silva. And Mr. Damika Kalpuge also. <laughs> so please come forward. With that session, uh, uh, we're gonna have the lunch break, but uh, uh, given the you know the very uh, tight schedule, uh, we may have about 15 minutes maximum. So uh, during the lunch session, actually, you are kindly requested to um, uh, mention your preferred name for the certificate. We have already circulated, as far as I know. So if you have done so, that's fine. And also make sure that you have um, put your signature uh, for the second day, for the today's sessions. And uh, we need to have uh, your attendance as well. Thank you so much. So we can start the lunch session. SLT Mobitel